Yeah, joining me now, Bishop E.W. Jackson, president of the group Staying True to America's National Destiny and a senior fellow with the Family Research Council. Bishop, uh, there's another part of this report that I want to start with, which is the fact that he, in his uh, manifesto that he sent to ABC News, in there he was talking about the fact that Jehovah told him to do this. He is, apparently was raised a Jehovah Witness. This gets into this whole area of of Allah Akbar and Muhammad and uh, pick your religion. I is this a religious war that this man had? Well, first of all, let's be clear. God is not ordering anybody to engage in a race war or to kill other people. And those who say that he is are serving something other than the God of the Bible and the God of this universe. I, I think this man was suffering, frankly, from a kind of racial psychosis tells people, some people, white, black, various backgrounds, that everybody who is not of their race is out to get them. Uh, and I think that's what he allowed to take him to the darkest place in his soul. It had nothing to do with God. Uh, true. but the, and, and, and I think you hit the nail there with the idea about it being a psychosis. People do sometimes, they say, God gave me the message to do something, which is absolutely opposite of what you and I believe as far as a good God, not a bad God out there. Right, exactly. Yeah. The other, the other part of this, though, is when you get into the Charleston shooting, uh, that that was one of the reasons that sparked him. But it sounds like this anger that he's had and the problems that he's had go way, way, way back past that. Do you believe that that was the incident that made this happen? Well, look, I think that there are probably a multiplicity of factors that go into this. But we sh should never discount this, that there are people in our society who are constantly promoting the idea of racial injustice and racial oppression. And I think, frankly, that weak minds or people who t tend toward a kind of mental illness, neurosis, psychosis of some kind, latch on to that. And that becomes the basis for all of their complaints and their anger. Uh, and, of course, we saw that in Charleston. And now, unfortunately, we've seen it in my own home state here in Virginia. The, the, the deeper question, though, much deeper question, we can't cover here in a couple of minutes, but this business about are we becoming, uh, do, we, do we value life less now? Or we, is social media, Hollywood, you know, Xbox games, what, what, is, what is it that's changed? Is our culture changing to the point where we don't value life as much as we used to? I think our culture is rejecting absolutes in general. I think most Americans, I'd like to believe, still believe that there's such a thing as absolutes and that life is sacred uh, from the womb to the tomb, as we say. But uh, I think there are a lot of people who just are rejecting that notion that everything's up for grabs and that includes life itself. And maybe being famous is more important than doing what is right toward one's fellow human beings. Uh, it's a sad direction in which we're going, and frankly, it's a dangerous direction that in other cultures has led to mass genocide, uh, and some people think that America could be poised to face the same kind of problems if we don't rein it in and come back to truth as the Founding Fathers saw it, truths that are self-evident and unchanging because they're given to us by our Creator. Yeah, and, and, and we, it's interesting you, you talk about it because he's basically, he's reaching out and saying, God made me do this. Uh, but then again, is is more of a secular society that turns their back on God. So it's a it's an interesting discussion. But I got to leave it there. Thank you, Bishop E. W. Jackson. Appreciate you coming. Thanks on for tonight. having me. You bet. Thank you. NASA.